Hello world, Mr. Resistor here, continuing our alpha journey. And let's see today, got Evermarks, Evermarks, and skill points. And it's drones, so it should go pretty fast. Which is good, because I'm recording kind of late today. Alright, we got a skin. And... So we want to head back out to... From... <coughs> Double check, it's now orange in system, so thinking I also want to take this ore out and uh, contract it over to my other characters along with some of the other stuff that I've accumulated out there in Aram. Yeah, let's open this up while we're here. Blackbird. And Baron. I think I also Oh, that's a lot Maybe I'll hold on to that for now That is There we go. That's kind of cool looking. Ooh. That's just a cool looking ship in general, honestly. I do really kind of like the look of a lot of the Kaldari ships. <clears throat> anyway, we'll hold on to those for now. Uh, Alright, so, there we go. So it was suggested that I should uh, try to do more commentary, which I think I was a lot more focused on early on. And uh, I kind of got to a point where I guess I felt like I'd said everything, but I should probably remember that just because I've said it before doesn't mean you've heard it before. So, uh, I'm going to try to talk about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it a little bit more. Um, we'll see how long it lasts. I'm not normally a super talkative person. 
Snap drive active. <clears throat> <clears throat> I was also asked about plexing. Um, that's uh, I'm not. It's not something I'm going to be trying to do with this character uh, anytime soon, because my sort of concept with this character and this channel is. <clears throat> really just to show what you can do as an alpha um, and obviously Snap drive active. I have to be an alpha to do that so um, <clears throat> for now uh, let's see so uh, this is kind of I guess phase three of this channel right the first I don't know several episodes were all about um, <clears throat> just uh, you know intro to the game sort of tutorial how I how I would start off playing a new character you know what stuff I would focus on um, so then phase two was uh, <clears throat> completing all of the um, air career path tasks, which I removed that from my toolbar, but air career program should be over here in the toolbar when you first start playing, I believe. Um, Docking permission requested. Got Docking a bunch of tasks accepted. under here. Um, they're worth trying for a variety of reasons. Um, yes, even the one that requires you to lose uh, 20 ships is worth doing. Um, I have a fair amount of experience with this game, but I've always been very loss averse. And uh, I think that's helped me um, develop a a healthier attitude towards uh, ship loss than I would say I had before. <clears throat> um, but also, um, you know, it's it's profitable. They they give you some gear. Most of it's not super good, but you know, if you're doing it when you're starting out, it's going to be good stuff. Um, they give you a lot of skill points. A fair amount of isk, and that is very much worthwhile. Um, so, you know, that was phase two for me, and I and I would recommend doing that if you have the the time and don't have like specific other things you want to get to right away. Um, so now I'm in phase three, which is kind of a kind of a long slog um and i'm not sure that i would recommend to everyone to do it but it's what i've kind of decided to do with this channel and that's t attempting to reach max alpha skills right <clears throat> so every one of these skills that's not <clears throat> excuse me All right, hopefully that's better for a while. So any, every one of these skills that's not marked off, you know, as Omega, um, or my goal is to uh, fill all these up as an alpha. So that means earning skills the hard way, right? Doing the, doing the daily stuff, um, uh, trying to get alpha skill injectors which reminds me should check the market orders no buy orders that must mean that I have a skill injectors I 
Nice. All right. So, yeah. Speaking of skills, um, <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> getting to max alpha skills the hard way is uh, is really my goal with this with this channel right now, and you know, and just kind of generally. Um, <clears throat> uh within that kind of you know trying stuff out i think um with you know with my with my other characters i do i do pay for omega cuz um my work schedule doesn't really give me enough time to to plex through uh playing and i haven't been dedicated enough to like work out the I don't know methods to do that without requiring so much time um, uh, and you know while while my job does take up a fair amount of, of time it does also pay enough that just paying the subscription fee is reasonable um, especially especially when I can get deals with, you know by like six months at a time or something like that. Uh, anyway, we don't need to ramble on about that too much. Um, let's make sure we've got everything we need. Insured. Okay. Let's go. Um, yeah, anyway. Where was I going with that? Um, yeah, uh, plexing. It is definitely... Um, is definitely possible to do. There are other channels um, that have gone over that. Um, drive active. So, <clears throat> if I was going to try to do that right now, probably my strategy would be to focus on faction warfare. Um, do as many battlefields as possible. When battlefields aren't available, uh, <clears throat> you know, run faction warfare plexes. Um, the larger you do, the more LP they give, right? Um, and of course, the more danger you're in, the more they pay out, right? So uh, ideally, you want to be running you know, medium or large plexes or, or open in uh, enemy frontline systems. Just rack up as many loyalty points as you can. Uh, and then, right, you trade, you trade those in for goods, which you then contract to, like, high sec buyback. Um, and to me, of the the activities that I've done with this character, um, I think I consider that to be the most um, probably the most efficient in terms of uh, disc per hour. So, um, <clears throat> number, uh, the second strategy I'd maybe look at, um, it, you know, if you don't, 
if you don't want the risk of faction warfare would be um, uh, Nullsack and or Wormhole Exploration, right? Nullsack Relic Sites um, can be pretty profitable. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, Wormhole Exploration can also be pretty profitable. Um, note that I don't think that's less dangerous and I think it's actually, um, in terms of actually getting a payout, um, I think that's actually higher risk than Faction Warfare, right? Faction Warfare, you're, you know, you've got a much higher risk of doing PvP, um, you know, battlefields and plexes aren't are mostly PvE, though. Um, you're mostly not going to be actually fighting other players in those activities. Um, and, you know, when you die, uh, you know, you still got the LP that you earned for whatever plexus you managed to complete, right? So it's all good. Um, your, uh, uh, your profits are, uh, more guaranteed, right? You might be more likely to lose a ship, but it's less likely to, uh, mean that you're not making anything from that activity on that day, right? Whereas... Nullsec exploration, um, <clears throat> you do have to make it uh, back to market alive, and that can be a problem. So, um, you know, you can maybe be out there for a day or two, get couple hundred million isk worth of stuff in your uh, in your probe or whatever and uh, <laughs> and get ganked on your way uh, back home and lose it all because uh, yeah uh, you know unless you got somewhere to sell it out where you're doing your exploration you got to get it back to market and that can be high risk so, uh, but can be very profitable. So that would, that that would be the the second strategy I would look at. Um, the third, and this is one that I don't have personal experience with, so I'm just kind of going off of what I heard is incursions. <clears throat> um, supposedly those can be very profitable. Um, you know, like billions of isk potentially. I don't, uh, as I said, I haven't I haven't done it myself, so I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, <clears throat> but that would be another another strategy to look at uh, in terms of how to flex your account through gameplay. Um, There was another channel where I think the uh, guy was looking at flexing this account through mining. Um, I don't know if that is 
a strategy I would seriously consider, but, you know, if you've really, uh, really got your stuff stuff if you've really got your stuff done you know what you're doing um, maybe that's viable um, certainly I have found that uh, low sec mining in faction warfare systems um, it's a lot safer than I suspected. Um, <clears throat> you know, so, uh, and all that kernite is valuable. Um, anything that'll, that'll give, uh, isogen. Because that's, uh, Acquiring isogen for my uh, my manufacturing character, honestly, acquiring isogen is probably the uh, one of the largest expenses, uh, just because it's it's required for so many blueprints. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> I've also seen. You know, stuff about gas mining. Not something I've really done a lot of. Um, there's also ice mining, which um, I've done a little bit of. Hasn't been hugely appealing to me. I've done a little bit of moon mining as well. Um, When I was really doing a lot of mining, I was uh, auditing some university classes. Um, during the pandemic, so, you know, I had a lot of times where I just had to sit and, like, watch videos. Um, and that is a... Great activity to do. Um, in conjunction with mining, you know, if you've got <clears throat> you've got another screen you can watch your videos on, mining can be a great way to pass the time. So that's how I'd recommend doing that if that's how you wanna if you wanna go. Uh, yeah, if you want to, if you want to track, try and plex through like mining and industry. You probably want to start with mining, and and that would be uh, that would be my recommendation. Because uh, <clears throat> mining takes a lot of time, but not a lot of attention. said with my Omega characters um, mining is probably the most common activity I do with them um, I have a fleet with an orca two hulks and a mac I'm just blanking on the full name of the mac Um, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I would say typical payout for that um, clearing one high sec asteroid belt is somewhere in the neighborhood of 
150 to 200 million esque. Those aren't exact numbers. I'm not a I'm not a disc per hour guy. I'm not uh <clears throat> not inclined to spend a lot of time tracking that stuff. Um but like I said, other people do and uh and I would encourage checking out their um, their channels I'm blanking on names right now I want to say uh, let's see off the top of my head I want to say Jake Lee probably has some videos on uh, flexing and isk per hour kind of stuff um, I don't remember if Planet Head does. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? The Womp guy talked about incursions, but I don't. But he never actually showed them. Um, he didn't show gameplay video. Um, trying to. You wanna do, guys? When you engage like a big game. I don't remember. Who else? Oh, A space maybe. That might be another one to check out. Um, it's been a while. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I want to say Jake Lead and uh, Ace Face for like tutorial kind of content and uh, there are probably some others um, if you do that and uh, would like to be known, um, you know, feel free to post in comments or whatever. I don't mind. I don't mind doing whatever I can to uh, help spread the, spread the word about your channel. All right, let's uh, let's do one more run. <clears throat> Just because it's going to bother me if I don't finish that, since I only need one more kill. Of course, now probably won't give me any drones this time. Oh yeah, so anyway, I was going to try and give more actual gameplay commentary. Um, so <clears throat> with these, so I'm doing um, tier one, right, calm. Um, And uh, yeah, my my real goal with these is to uh, 
is to complete the skill point uh, challenges. Um, <clears throat> secondarily, right, these are worth 100,000 each. Um, and these are uh, manufacturing materials. Um, so they're worth something. Um, and of course you get some other stuff in here, right? There's some, some blueprints occasionally, some modules, that kind of stuff. Um, that can also be sold or used if you're if you're so inclined. Um, <clears throat> I typically uh, sell them to my manufacturing alt. <clears throat> um, as far as my, my basic strategy here, right, I've gone missiles for range, um, heavy missiles. Since I'm doing heavy missiles, that kind of means I need to be in a cruiser. Um, you know, you can, you can do these, uh, in a frigate or a destroyer. Um. Uh, the challenge with those is putting out enough damage to get it done within the time limit, right? Because you've got 20 minutes to complete three rooms. Um, the, uh, I would say you probably always want to get the bioadaptive cache. You could skip the extraction subnodes if you want um, or if you feel like you don't have time <clears throat> uh, I usually grab them because I'm a compulsive looter um <clears throat> But when I do try, eventually get around to trying the next tier up, probably for my first run or so, I'll focus on just getting kills and getting through it as quick as possible. Um, and, you know, just kind of try to uh, get a feel for it before I, like, risk the extra time necessary to make sure I'm getting all the loot. Um, <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of like from there, if you are going to try and, and loot the, uh, the extraction nodes, then it's a matter of trying to uh, trying to have a, a uh, an efficient path, right? Um, and of course, you want speed, so that's why I've got the afterburner going. I've also um, my uh, previous ship uh, used a micro warp drive. Um, you can, uh, <clears throat> starting at T1, you do occasionally get um, enemies that will that will newt or uh, warp scramble you. So um, the micro warp drive can definitely be a, li a liability there. It also uh, reduces your total capacitor. So. Um, Uh, but when it's not a liability, you know, 
it is faster. Hard to deny. So, um, up to you whether you want that trade-off. I'm pretty happy um, with this uh, with this ship since uh, switching to an afterburner build. I do also have um, have speed rigs. I'll bring up my uh, yeah auxiliary thrusters, polycarbon engine housing. So both of these are increasing my speed. <clears throat> That's how I'm getting, you know, 900 meters per second in a cruiser. Um, I have on another character, uh, it's in a, a Mar cruiser, I think it was an Omen, right? An afterburner build with no. Uh, speed rigs and <clears throat> it felt like a real challenge um, I also didn't have the range because because uh, of the guns I had mounted on that ship so um, <clears throat> I think my personal recommendation is uh, consider range first and foremost then speed and then tank and uh, you know if you've got <clears throat> if you've got enough range and speed then your tank is not going to be a big problem at least not at this level um, you know I assume higher difficulty is more difficult we'll see when we get there At the calm level, though, I mean, this is. <clears throat> these are pretty easy runs. I should say usually. Uh, <clears throat> I've gotten into trouble a couple of times. I've even lost at least one ship. Maybe two. I don't remember. <clears throat> but, uh... <clears throat> it definitely does happen. Um, if you're gonna try and make serious money, you definitely want to go into the more difficult levels. You'll get a lot more loot um, that way. <clears throat> At least that's my understanding. Um, but I can't say that from personal experience. <clears throat> Don't forget to reload.
I've said this, I think I've said this before, it probably bears repeating. Um, I'm using a fleet issue scythe here. Um, probably my first choice for for abyssals though, um, at least at the alpha level, would be a fleet issue caracal. I haven't actually tried it, but uh, my feeling is that would, uh, <clears throat> yeah, with the extra range, I believe it has an extra uh, hard point for missiles. Uh, so you'd be doing more damage be moving a little bit slower um, but uh, but the range and extra damage I feel like would maybe make up for that um, the fact that I've only got 58 kilometers range on these missiles um, does definitely slow me down sometimes because you know especially if I'm going after the extraction nodes right sometimes that that'll take me out of range um, of the enemy especially especially the big ships that aren't moving as fast uh, we just did three rooms with no uh, no drones, didn't we? Do I do another one? Uh, we're at 40 minutes and it's late, so I think we don't. <clears throat> Orb drive active. <clears throat> Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Sell here. So not I'll slow down by clicking. sell these two. Not going to worry about the blueprints right now, but 
So I'm going to copy this selection list, take it over to HiSec Buyback to get the price, and I'm not going to contract it to them. I want to try and kind of keep it there, right? <clears throat> As if this were my only character. So we'll keep the prices the same. <clears throat> and that's why I'm not worrying, uh, bothering with the blueprints right now. Because uh, my sec buyback doesn't take those. money in our pocket and let's go ahead and spend our skill points skill training completed nice <clears throat> that cost I haven't actually used torpedoes but if I'm going to try flying a battleship at some point torpedoes might be something I want to look at um, cruise missiles Not sure what the difference is between cruise missiles and torpedoes. I assume one of these is like equivalent to rockets and the other is more like, you know, the big version of light missiles. But, uh, yeah. Good question. <clears throat> anyway that's going to be it for me for today. So until next time, have a good one.